and that is trying to uh, break down barriers for uh, uh, foreign trained professionals and breaking down barriers for uh, newcomers to Ontario. And uh, I was uh, just thinking, uh, I know Jane mentioned regulatory bodies that are here and uh, the TRIAC and ACCESS and you know, and I did want to say that uh, Jane has been most helpful and over the last year I've uh, gotten her, received her advice on a number of different areas because she's worked with PROMPT and APSO and uh, TRIAC. So as we've been shaping uh, the new uh, legislation, uh, legislative initiatives, uh, uh, her advice was really invaluable because we really wanted to do something uh, most uh, constructive, meaningful, uh, that would really stand the test of time. And uh, a lot of the uh, details in Bill 124 are many of the ideas that many of you have uh, brought forward and advocated for over a number of years. And that's why I say the, the initiative, the uh, Fair Access Regulated Professions Act, Bill 124, was just, by the way, passed second reading last week, and then now we'll go to the next step in committee, uh, is really the accumulation of a lot of the ideas you've put forward. Uh, because it's, uh, as someone said here earlier, it's very, a very complex area with so many levels of um, nuance and so many levels of complexity that I always just shudder to think how a new Canadian coming from Bulgaria could ever uh, make an application to one of our regulatory bodies and actually get through the process. Uh, I mean, it's tough enough for anybody who may have English as the first language is born and raised in Toronto to ever uh, make an application and find out how these mysterious bodies work. What we need to do every now and then as government or as um, citizens is look at our institutions and our process to make sure they meet the test of fairness. To ensure they meet the test of transparency, accountability, and uh, that uh, these processes are friendly to people who most need them to be friendly and most need for them to be fair. So what we've done is we've done a series of things essentially to try and get rid of barriers. And we've done them because, you know, there's a very simple equation. You know, if newcomers succeed, we all succeed. <coughs> and the reason why I think uh, there's been such success in uh, Ontario and Canada is because really the excellent work that many of you do, uh, have done and the organizations you represent have done really uh, for decades without real notice of the fact you've been contributing to part of the economic social success of our society because of your expertise, your volunteerism, uh, your organizational skills, whether it's skills for change or, or all the other bodies that are here and all the other bodies that are community-based that are trying to help newcomers. They've worked uh, in communities all across Ontario for decades to ensure that uh, newcomers uh, feel, first of all, welcome, uh, they get proper counseling, they get support, a shoulder to cry on. So that's been going on uh, across uh, Canada, across Ontario for, for a number of years, but there's never been a real recognition given of the economic and social benefits that have been derived uh, from your work. And if you look at, as I said, how somehow magically and mysteriously we've survived and prospered as a society, uh, it's because many of you have such expertise and such devotion to the cause. For many years, it wasn't quite the thing to do politically to talk about the values or the value of immigration, the benefits of immigration, the necessity of immigration, uh, the imperatives of immigration. That wasn't politically the thing to do. So nobody ever stood up in champion and says, hey, what about the fact if an immigrant goes to Montreal, there's an investment of about $4,000 in that success of that immigrant in Montreal, same immigrant comes to Skills for Change, there's only $800 available. Five times as much investment. That's gone on that's again, since 1990. And the, one of the reasons, that's one of the reasons why some of our newcomers have not done as well as they used to do, even though they're better educated than you know, when I came or when my, my parents came years ago. Because as you know, 70% of them have postgraduate uh, degrees or better, uh, highly skilled, some of the best universities uh, in India, China, wherever, yet they can't get a job here. And they can't get a job because, again, there has been a mindset about not looking at a person's qualifications or abilities, but looking at a person in terms of their package. In other words, uh, what is their accent? 
where is your degree from? And many of the people doing the assessment didn't even understand the value of degrees that came from Indian institutes that were a higher caliber than MIT. So the person doing the assessment at the regulatory body or at uh, a workplace didn't even understand what was happening in the rest of the world. He says, well, you don't have a degree from York, you know, and I don't know what I can do about that. <laughs> But not to put down York, <laughs> no, not to put down York. <laughs> uh, Lorna Marsden would not forgive me. But anyway, you can see the point I'm trying to make. So what we we have to do, we must do, because we have a serious challenge, economically, socially, and at our peril. If we don't invest in the success of newcomers, we will not continue to automatically, magically continue to prosper and grow as a so country. So when we start to really do this there will be a massive, massive improvement, I think, in the lot of a lot of people's lives. And so many are silently suffering right now in our communities because they're not getting that opportunity. So I ask you to join me in ensuring whether you're part of a regulatory body or you work wherever you work uh, or volunteer, please encourage them to join this paradigm shift. We have to. The status quo, uh, the piecemeal approach no longer is acceptable. We must start to really practice what we preach. If we, you know, and you have it right in there, diversity in your slogan, diversity at work. If diversity is really going to work, we're going to have to make some changes. So I ask you to join me in making these changes and in partnership. As uh, the last thing I'll say is, there is excitement in the air. Things are changing. There's resources finally, and there's very, very excellent opportunity uh, that I'm sure you're welcome in the days and months ahead. So again, thank you for all the work that you do, uh, and uh, and thank you for helping so many people that uh, cannot sometimes speak for themselves. Uh, you are their voice, and you're a very strong voice. And please continue to speak out. And uh, we can really, together, as I said, really get rid of some of these obstacles that uh, really uh, make no sense. Thank you so much. <laughs>